Hello everyone, welcome to eLearn Chat, where talk is knowledge. Here we go. Hi everyone, I'm Rick Zanotti and welcome to eLearn Chat. And joining us today is our co-host. She's going to be co-hosting all the way through April 15th. And you know her, I'm sure. Lisa Goldstein. Hey Lisa, how are you? Good, how are you? Good morning. Doing great. Um, well, we've got a good show planned today. We've got, we had a, a little bit of a, a problem last week. Lisa, Risa lost her internet connection but she's got it and she's looking great over here and so what we're going to be doing today is is talking with dr risa blair hey risa how are you today hey great rick how's it going it's going great and uh, tell us a little bit about yourself well actually i came through e-learning kind of a an interesting path and that path included starting way back when at champlain college which is so cool because Champlain's located in Burlington, Vermont, and they were extreme innovators in terms of uh, getting online programs and courses going. But that was b back in the day when online meant email and a web page. So, boy, have we come a long way from there. Uh, beyond that, certainly I've done a lot of college teaching and course development, corporate training, even multi-language uh, deployed corporate training. So I've had a lot of experiences using different tools and both in higher ed and on the corporate side. Yeah, and I met you through Dr. Alan Partridge. You were doing, uh, I think we were doing a show with him and you were in the background and you've got That's a Captivate right. background too, Adobe Captivate and other tools. Oh, sure, sure. And in fact, I'm, I'll be headed to the conference in Orlando, which is only about four and a half hours from Miami tomorrow headed to the eLearn conference. Yeah. I just couldn't get there sooner. <laughs> I've got too many commitments. So I'm looking forward to seeing the gang and especially the uh, demo fest with all the new presentations, yep. state-of-the-art kinds of things people put together. So I'm really looking forward to that, seeing Dr. Pooja Jai Singh and Dr. Nancy Reyes. And I wanted to give a shout out to Jeff Blanchard. Jeff said, hey, Risa, mention my name when you're on. So <laughs> he's listening. He will be listening to the recording in Australia. He said he couldn't quite get up early enough to catch us. Yeah, he used to. He actually used to get up every single show, 2, 3 in the morning. Go to bed, get up again and watch the shows, and then it took a toll on him. Uh, it, it, it's, it's a big a time difference from here to Australia. So oh, yeah. 17 hours, yeah. and you know, it's, it's, it's long. But anyway, yeah, Jeff's a good friend. Uh, we're going to have him out here in May again, so he'll be on vacation out this way. Oh, nice. So that'll be good. Well, yeah. Well, Risa, tell me, what's, what's new in your life right now? Well, what's really impressed me in the last couple of weeks, I had the opportunity to attend the uh, Society of Applied Learning Technologies Conference, in, also in Orlando. Orlando, you may know, is a pretty big hotbed for technology conferences like Vegas is in California. And uh, Maya Georgieva from NYU, the Stern Business School, was just phenomenal. It just so, so very interesting, you know, talking about and reflecting on her experiences with Google Glass and bringing those experiences and technologies live to the classroom. And, you know, I just thought about it. How fantastic go, to go to the face-to-face -face classroom and just wander in with Google Glass and start talking with students and recording and working with the different groups. Just really interesting experience. Uh, she was a pretty amazing presenter. Um, one of the other interesting things I've been doing is working a bit with some of the publishers and I did a presentation on the flip classroom which you would think has been around forever and ever but my particular group was biology professors and coming up with some different strategies to use that whole concept and of course technology 
plays a huge role. So uh, flipping the classroom and taking advantage of some of the Khan Academy videos as well as a lot of other resources makes for an interesting presentation. I think we've come so far with technology that uh, people don't really have to continue to reinvent the wheel every minute that there, there are wonderful resources that we can tap into and utilize for teaching, for training. Uh, they're just huge wealth, huge wealth. I think we lost Lisa. Oh, no. Yeah. She, I just realized that she is not here. Hmm. Let me see if we can get her back on. I guess she okay. had a little bit of a Skype issue. Can you switch me back full screen? Sorry about that. That's okay. Well, Lisa, in the meantime, Risa, in the meantime. Um, she just realized that she... What? Rick, Rick, can you hear me? Sorry I, about that. My I, internet's having problems. Oh, okay. We lost you for a moment. You're back. <laughs> Oh, goodness. So, so uh, uh, I've lost parts of the conversation, um, but um, okay. I'm really interested in the technologies. Um, you, you started talking about Google Glasses and exciting things. What kinds of things do you apply uh, with what you're doing at Kaplan? Well, actually, Kaplan, my whole experience really is online, but I'm real eager to pursue different opportunities where I can use the Web 2.0 tools to bring to the classroom so I've done a lot with like little videos for messages or I'll just do a, even a quick little jing if students need to know how to do something and they can't figure it out I'll just create a little jing video and throw it up or just email it to them or, or post it and they can have access to it at another time. I think our students today have high expectations for a huge amount of interactivity and use of different technologies. Now I know I have friends where the students are texting back and forth all the time with their professors. I would love to do that. I probably at some point need to bite the bullet and just purchase a phone strictly for student use for texting. No voice, just texting. Because I've uh, come to realize students really aren't reading email anymore. So you know, true. either we're, we're getting them in innovative ways through use of video or mm, maybe an announcement in a class, but e I hate to say email's dead. It's not, but it's really <laughs> an old technology. And I read a quote recently that kind of resonated with the way most of our students think, you know, class is boring, sitting in class is boring, email's boring. <laughs> they put it all together. So some of the other wearable technologies in Maya Georgieva's presentation, um, one of one of the um, people who presented with her had a little, I'm touching my lapel, had a little lapel camera that was interesting mm -hmm. where it, it just took pictures all over the place. Oh, just that's cool. Random, well, random pictures, nothing posed, just random pictures and just, you know, was posting them out on the internet where you'd go through and just see a sequence of, of what you did for a few hours of the day. I, I think he mentioned about a thousand pictures an hour, just shooting wow. pictures. Just shooting pictures. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that, that I thought was also an interesting technology and, you know, could be the kind of thing would which would not be too expensive, which if you were teaching a class in art or art and aesthetics, you could just say like students buy an art history book, guess what? You're going to buy this little camera, you're going to wear it in your lapel, you're going to take a walk in the city or the country or the woods or wherever for an hour or two and then you're going to come up with these thousand pictures and choose the top 100 and write a story about your experience and what you did and what they mean to you. I could see some real application, creative application there too. Now, have you ever actually worked with um, Google Glass? I haven't. You I, know, I, I'm waiting, and that's one of the things Maya talked about. She said, you know, by Christmas this year, the end, the end of this year, the price is going to drop and be reasonable. You know, I've read some of the sensationalism where you, the folks were in a club or a bar or somewhere, and somebody thought he or she was being recorded, and that was an issue, which... You know, right now the technology is developed and is 
as advanced as it is, I think it's still in its infancy. I think right. it's going to be much more <clears throat> streamlined and integrated in the next few versions. But nevertheless, the price has to drop if it's really going to go to the consumer market by the end of the year. You know, I keep thinking of this Star Trek episode in The Next Generation. I forgot what it was called. The game, I think it was called. And they had a little device that would just point at their eye and it affected the cortex and everything else and they got addicted within minutes. And I keep thinking, yeah, I don't know about all this technology. I think it's a little much and I wonder how many people are going to be having accidents and whatever because they're too focused on what's going on inside their glass. Except, I would think you're probably going to get used to it. I, I, I mean, I, I'd never really worked with all the controls or anything. Right. And I, I was dying to ask Maya, you know, can I put those on? <laughs> I did it. But, you know, she talked about how you could just put your hand, you know, right here to run video, to sh turn things on, turn yep. things off. <laughs> but also how you could actually blink. And if you blinked too hard... <laughs> something was happening that, you know, the controls aren't 100% yet. Wow. Now, another thing we were talking about a little bit was e-learning, the state of e-learning. I know we did that manifesto thing last week, mm -hmm. and there's been a lot of comments on that and what it is and what it, what it means. And, mm -hmm. and, 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 and like I think like Michael Allen said, it's just a spark to get people talking. But what, what's, what are some of your opinions on, on e-learning, where we are, where we could be, what's good, what's bad? Well, from the higher ed academic side, there are three obvious modalities right now, I think, in terms of the way e-learning is deployed. And, and one is an asynchronous modality where, you know, you've got the instructor doing the routine things, discussions and the assignments, and the students are testing. And then you've got the combination where the students are in asynchronous and synchronous situations where they have a live seminar once a week. But I think it's becoming, although as professors, we really like to engage with the students in real time, synchronously, planned time. I don't know that for the students, it really serves them that well that, I don't know that they really want to be there in a live session like that. But then, of course, the third modality is everybody's working, or many folks are investigating and using competency-based education rather than a course at a time. So it, it's kind of a race to figure out which is the best way for students to become educated. You know, how are you going to hit those competencies? How are you going to make sure the learning is memorable and it's not just learn it for the test and spit it back. Now, one thing I hear all the time is a lot of people say, you know, it's a new industry. Uh, 40 years isn't new. Mm -mm. It, it, and I think that's an excuse for just, it hasn't gone where, it, where the promise or where it should be going. But if you think about it, I mean, since the 70s, we've had e-learning. You know, late 70s, I remember doing green screen e-learning back then. It was interesting. Um, it just hasn't really quite lived up to its promise. I think we had a heyday probably in the 90s because multimedia started kicking in mm -hmm. and the tools haven't really progressed forward that much. I think they've actually gone backwards in many cases because they're, they're geared for an instructional designer which is not necessarily a technical person. And, and as a result, there's, there's more limits to what the tools can do or at least easily do. Uh, and then you've got new tools, which a lot of people complain are either too hard or they don't get it. Or, you know, back in back back in the day, we had Authorware and Icon Author, and you could do a lot of stuff with those tools. And now a little more limited. Little, I mean, we had back then a tool that generated Authorware. It was Authorware generating Authorware, so we could generate courses in no time with complete flexibility as to how it was done because the tool allowed us to. Uh, there's no tool on the market that can do that right now. Um, at least, maybe, maybe Zebra's apps, I'm not sure, I haven't tried it, but none of them can generate themselves, which is sort of interesting. So you can't create the things to make it easier or to, uh, without limiting the power. So, so what do you think about the, the, where the market's gone and where the tools have gone? Um, <sighs> Well, it's kind of funny because, you know, I do use Captivate quite a lot and I also see 
a lot of folks are asking about articulate and and so I'm I kind of see behind the scenes not even so behind the scenes the big articulate captivate battle but since I'm so much more comfortable with captivate that's that's where I'll stay but nonetheless when I look at work that's generated in articulate I you know downloaded the demo of course to take a look the programs aren't so very different you know articulate seems to have kind of have copied what captivate put together with not tremendous amount of difference but in terms of really the next great thing you know I I don't know it kind of goes back to the whole Clark Cosma debate you know is it the technology or is it the professor in terms of the higher ed world and I'm sorry I'm always gonna fault on this land on the side of the professor that no matter what technology is out there it, it's really the folks who are doing the facilitation for either a higher ed uh, education class or training class if you've got something uh, facilitated that it's the person running the show yeah yeah I don't think we're gonna get rid of professors anytime soon that's for sure although although you know some of the models that people are experimenting with are, you know, the big, huge classroom models with lots of students listening to a lecture and then having, you know, mentoring in the background where students are kind of working one-on-one -on -one in the lab environment. But that's nothing new. I mean, back in the 70s, you had the big lecture hall classes, four or 5,000 students, and you had little labs to handle the finer points or the tougher points. So, you know, really it's just taken what we've known and done forever and kind of updated it and put it online. Risa, there's a, a chat room and there's some questions um, going around in there. So Lily's in the chat room, or, or I'm sorry, Leave is in the chat room and she's saying, um, she's asking, if, have you ever used Zebra's apps? I have not. I have not. I've actually seen it demonstrated and I thought it was pretty cool. Leave. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and also, Risa, I'm really interested in your Toastmasters involvement. Um, will you tell us about that and, and tell us how it's benefited you? Oh, sure. I, unbelievable um, story about Toastmasters. I actually had a review. This is so funny. I had a review with a manager and the manager delivered the news that I was not a good communicator and had to work on my communication skills. And I'm sorry, it, it it was just funny. <laughs> it was just very funny because it's never been a problem. <laughs> From the time I was a super little kid, my dad was um, an eye drug salesman to uh, doctors and hospitals. So all the time the phone would ring and he taught us as little little kids, seven, eight years old, to answer the phone, to get a name, to get a number. So in terms of communication, and my father would still say to this day, I, you know, I'm never really at a loss for words. Well, it's because dad taught me, okay? If I ask a question, I expect an answer. And I don't know, doesn't work. That won't cut it. So anyway, from this review, I thought, oh, okay. I just sat and, and took it. And I don't know, it was a two out of three or two out of four, whatever it was. Fine, okay. And I thought to myself, you know, this is never going to happen again. I'm going to Toastmasters. And that way I've got documentation that says I've gone through the speaking process and that particular training so the first night I went I was really impressed and I met some wonderful folks actually um, Carolyn Stein who has her own consulting company working with businesses and corporate and has done a tremendous amount of different things in her life highly talented person and uh, Carolyn was passing out some paperwork, did, you know, did anyone want to mentor? And I thought she was lovely and I said, yeah, pick me, pick me. I would love for you to be my mentor. So Carolyn is. And the next class I went to, which was in a few weeks, a man stood up and spoke who was a very talented person, wonderful speaker. And I went up to speak with him after the session and said, you know, you're such a wonderful speaker, you have such great skills, and I just wondered, where do you work? And so this gentleman worked at FedEx. And I said, really? And at the time, I was kind of looking for my next great opportunity because I, I don't, um, 
I, I don't really like moss to grow under my feet. I like to work hard and I like to progress and move forward. And that's just the way I am. And I happened to look on the FedEx website and I found a position that I was extremely interested in for which I thought I'd be a great fit. And I applied. I sent my resume and cover letter. Well, this man, I, I didn't, he didn't have any cards. But I did remember his first and last name and where he worked, you know, which location. So I got on the 800 number and I asked to speak with him in his office, which I, I got to his voicemail, left a message and said, you know, hi, this is Dr. Risa Blair calling and we spent some time speaking last night at the Toastmasters meeting and I wanted to let you know I checked the Toastmasters website, found a wonderful position which, for which I'm well qualified and I applied. Well, all he heard was Dr. Risa Blair. <laughs> I don't know what he thought, but that's all he heard. He called me back, and he hand-walked my resume and cover letter to the hiring manager who called me in for an interview, and the rest was history. So at Toastmasters, I, I stuck with it for quite a while. I still go occasionally. Um, I finished their first manual. I've been to a couple of their, um, not I guess, conferences, you'd call them, and really, really great people, wonderful community, talented folks. So, Lisa, have you been a Toastmaster? I haven't, but it kind of sounds like one of the biggest reasons you would recommend it is because of networking. Exactly, exactly. And in fact, uh, we have a president here right now in our Miami area who is a pilot, and she's really bright, and I, I do need to get back to going again you know you kind of get out of the habit with things and get too busy and so I, I need to start showing up those meetings because she's done a wonderful job using meetup in fact I, I'm not sure how much you use meetup but um, has really grown our chapter here that's great and do you network with other Toastmaster groups or or do you just stay within your local group mostly it, it's really a combination. I've actually gone to some events where I've met other Toastmasters and we've connected and maintained a relationship. Very, very nice group of people. Lots of nice professionals to network with. So, Dr. Risa, have you um, spoken at um, any of the e-learning conferences or do you plan to in the near future? Actually, I, I do quite often. Right at this immediate juncture, I've not. From uh, FedEx, I started working at Blackboard as an implementation consultant, and the president chose to have a giant reorg, and I was part of that reorg, so I'm actually looking for my next great opportunity. So I, I've been a little bit tight on the purse strings. <laughs> <coughs> and you work teaching at, you're, you also teach online at Kaplan, right? Oh, absolutely. I teach online for Kaplan University. Extremely innovative, student-centered. I've been at Kaplan, in fact, since '05, and you know I've really seen them work very hard to engage students and build courses, meaningful programs. Really, at, at the helm, some very, very bright folks. Yeah, and that's why everybody keeps asking if you know J.D. Dillon. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Okay. He was on well, the show. Now, now I've show definitely got to check him out on LinkedIn. Yep, he was on the show last year. You could probably, if actually, if you see the show from last year, you'll probably see him. Uh, you'll okay. go. I know him. I've seen him around. Well, but that's the thing. As I said, so many of us are so distributed across the country, with True. administrative offices <coughs> in Fort Lauderdale, administrative offices in Chicago, and with a teaching piece, we're all virtual. So, you know, we see each other at faculty meetings, or I do go to graduation every year in Miami, which is a fantastic experience. We had a wonderful speaker, Donald Graham, in February came and spoke to the students and uh, did an awesome job. Kaplan is now owned by Graham Holdings, so, and Donald Graham is the son of Catherine Graham, so it was awesome. Um, there's a question in the chat room from Laura. She's wondering, what's the time commitment of Toastmasters? Time commitment? 
actually it's about an hour and a half a week or so the meetings are an hour and a half or so could be an hour and the clubs meet with different sequences so sometimes they meet twice a month sometimes uh, once a week all different times mornings weekends evenings and then in terms of the conferences which happen to be very you know really cost effective very actually really inexpensive for what you get out of them get to go to some different training sessions and see other speakers speak and pick up some good ideas for how to present yourself but definitely a worthwhile organization to belong to okay. Laura and I are in the same city so Laura and I will have to hook up and see where the local Toastmasters group is yeah check it out most most of the Toastmasters clubs allow you at least once or twice to come for free so definitely take advantage. Um, another question in the group, in, in the chat room is, are you using social media to improve collaboration for your online students? <sighs> That's such a great question. I, I would say yes and no. I, as, because I'm in an online situation, I'm re really probably a little bit cautious. So, uh, somewhat reluctant, more, more to use Web 2.0 tools out there to engage students than social media, to be completely honest. What, what do you see the drawbacks to the social media pieces are? More than anything, it's one more thing to maintain, to be completely honest. Yeah. One more thing yeah. to watch out for, to watch over. You know, I feel the same way. I feel like I'm in... Google Plus and Twitter and LinkedIn and Facebook and there's all these things to constantly check and I feel spread thin and I feel like some of those places sometimes uh, you know don't get my fair attention I noticed um, you don't it, I don't think I saw a Twitter account for you is, is that because you feel the same way on that topic no actually I need to begin my Twitter feed again I I had a Twitter account and I got hacked oh. and so <laughs> I shut it down so I I need to go back and redo that be, because of all of them, uh, Twitter I think is very cool. Instagram, I've not worked with a lot. Pinterest, I think is pretty neat too. Link, LinkedIn, I really live and love by. I probably check LinkedIn as much as I do email, just because it seems like for professionals, there's so much going on there in terms of rich discussions, uh, shared articles, very high level of professionalism. Well, we, we need a really good. Uh, curation tool that will curate all of our feeds for us and give us the updates. It probably is something, I just don't know about it. And something that allows you to, when you send a message, pick all your social media, you know, pieces, Google+, Twitter, Facebook, you know, all of it, you know, all at once instead of one at a time. Well, I, I actually like scoop.it. I don't know that that will do what it is you need, but I think that's a pretty good tool. Have you used scoop.it? I've seen the scoops, but um, I haven't personally played with it. I, I do have an account. It's one, one more thing where I'm spread really thin, where I've given about five seconds of my attention. Well, but I usually use it to do a search. Like if I'm looking for um, Pinterest and educational ideas or something, you can do a quick search in there and you can pull up the articles that are related. So it, it's a neat way to find very current information, I think. Oh, that's smart. I'm going to have to check that out a little bit yeah, more. Yeah, yeah. What I think is funny is that we're all following each other in any, every single venue, and it's all the same info after a while. <laughs> Just go, hmm. It, it gets interesting because we all post the same things. So if you post to one, you post to three or four or five or six. And I think, I wonder at what point we're all going to get saturated. <laughs> kind of interesting. That's, you know, that's a huge issue. And I, I do check five email addresses mm -hmm. routinely every day, which takes a lot of time. I, I'm not in them all day long, but you know I'm teaching at a couple places. I have my personal email. I'm doing some training work somewhere else, and then I have my other another professional email address I use. So you know, five accounts every day is a lot to stay current just with those accounts. And then you know, teaching online is a real big responsibility. Uh, students have, students expect you to be in there immediately. You know, I, I do the grading on a very routine and regular basis, but nevertheless, 
you know, somebody will rework something and then resubmit it. And within an hour, I'll get an email. Did you check it? Did you change my grade? Is my grade <laughs> going to be better? <laughs> Yeah, it's amazing how, how many different things we have to check out. I mean, thank goodness for, you know, uh, our devices. But, you know, it starts to get overwhelming when, like, every single one of the icons have an indicator. You know, I've, I've got all these places that I have to, have to open and check nonstop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's so, it's so true. It's so very true. Absolutely. I mean, I, I think I'm, I'm really enjoying Flipbook on my Android. I don't know oh, yeah. if you guys use that one. Yeah, Flipbook is good. Yeah, I like that. Well, we've got about a minute left. Any more questions okay. in the chat room? Um, no new questions. I just see a, a note from Leave that says um, she does at, use Twitter with her students so that she can get them to ask their questions in 140 characters or less. You know, that what? is one thing that's really good about Twitter is it forces you to think succinctly which and, and be less, less verbose, which is a good thing. Now, did you say leave? Did yes. you say leave? Leave. Uh -huh. Okay. Leave. Okay. I didn't know if you said leave or Lee. Leave. I will be seeing you in the morning. So we will see each other. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure she's, she's here, right? She's not. Oh, oh, I thought she was here. No, okay. she didn't make this show. Huh? She didn't go to this one. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, she, she's just in the chat room. Okay. Leave next time. Next time. Um, it, well, and, you know, I was going to say, once you leave the computer, then you move to the phone and you have to handle everything that's going on there with the multiple sure. chats that are happening on the phone and pay attention. Yeah. But I, I think Aliva's advice about running the Twitter feed to handle questions for students, I'm going to do that. I'm going to set up Twitter accounts for all my classes, let the students let that go in and I tell them to follow me. That way, if I need to update something, give them feedback, they don't have to go to the dreaded email. <laughs> well, you know what's great about that, too, is that now in your stream, if you, if you have them do a hashtag, they can also answer each other's questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's good. It's very good. Well, we well this, are... been, this has been great, and I wanted to thank you guys so much. Are there any uh, parting questions, comments? No, we are at the end of our time. We'd love to have you back on, and um, that'll be fun. So we can... Okay. We'll only touch, believe me, I've talked to Risa on the side and, and she's got a million things to say. So we've only covered like a little bit of, of Risa. So. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day, folks. You and too. Take care. And, and for all those in the chat room, thanks for being there. And if you're watching the video on Vimeo, please subscribe. Give us your feedback. We love hearing from you. Uh, Lisa, also, thanks for being here today and through April. Love having you. My pleasure. Take care, Lisa. And nice bye. to see bye, you. Bye, Lisa. Thank you much. Bye, Have a good Take one, care. everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>